What RTLS is, real quick, I'm just gonna speak and show tags for the most part right the second. Um, it really is, ESS is still the basis of our whole system. We still have to do a recording and collect all the data as a site survey is. So there's really no difference. We still have to go through and do a calibration. And this is one of our major industry differences is we have to do a calibration. And in our calibration, we're taking a site survey and we're going to every room, every location that you want to have tracking at. So you have to go into the closets, you have to go into any place where the client says, I want tracking. So you have to go do that. And it's just the same as a site survey, but there's one difference. We do a site survey as, as one of our, our ECHAHA tags. So Ultimately, we've, we've already put our tag on the network, we're collecting data and we're, we're functioning. So there's three, there's really a couple parts to the RTL solution. Obviously the wireless infrastructure, then there's the, um, the uh, server that's running our Ekahala RTLS controller software, and then there's the tags. And all it is is just, they're just passing network. We have, um, they're, doing, they're, they're just talking on the network. We have associated mode or we have infrastructure mode. And what infrastructure mode is, is just really layer two management. It's really, we're talking to the controllers and the tags aren't really directly talking to us. So it's the APs are hearing it and they're passing that direction. We've got that integration with most of the major, uh, the Wi-Fi infrastructures out there so we can really go ahead and do all that stuff. And it's really just taking away the fact that we don't have to associate. And then at that point in time, you know, taking away all that simple traffic there and it increases our battery life by a factor of about 10 on that front there. So that's the simple way. Now when we do a calibration, I actually go around with the tag and I connect it to my laptop and I have site survey running. What I, have a do, what I can do is in my device settings here, oh, he doesn't have RTLS enabled here. It have RTLS enabled on here and what it is is you can do what we call an engine calibration. So I'm walking through with a tag, going every place I want to and doing all that fun stuff there. So that's, go ahead. Actually, we don't. You can really go through with one tag. You find out what the use case is, you go through with that tag. So if it's this, I can do it with this tag. This is our asset tag. This is our personnel tag. And then I have also right here, our patient tag. So it depends on what the use case is. Heck, I can even do an engine based upon the phones or whatever you're using to track. So as long as it's reporting into my engine, I can see it, I can do a calibration based upon that device. So, so like uh, we've integrated with various different voice, voice phones. They actually have our client on there. It points to our Echo RTLS controller server. So we're getting that data and we do that calibration. So now that we've collected it, we've gone through, we've done a survey and we've created what we call a model. We upload that model into the system. Once we have that model in there, then that's what we use. So our, our system is RSSI fingerprinting. That's what we use. So it's a matter of what you know, here's I'm going to report and say, you know, this MAC address saw these different RSSI values, so therefore our algorithm hears that, and then it goes through a little bit of math and says, where's the highest probabilistic area that has a similar RSSI footprint, and that's where it's going to put it. So once you do that, then you have the model. And we do it completely wireless. Now, there are, are opportunities for you to do it. That's going to get you, typically we're going to tell you that's going to get you about three meter Accuracy. Typically, I'm going to say room level accuracy in a hospital with a, with a really dense voice over grade Wi-Fi network. You know, it degrades as you go down on the network design. If you say a data network, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more higher. But typical hospital, you're going to be able to say room level accuracy. Now, there's use cases that say, well, I need a little bit more granularity. I need a little bit more accuracy on that point in time. So we'll use. And, and right there, I don't know if you ever saw those things, those two little white things standing right there in the middle there. Those are our LB1, so those are our location beacons. So if I have an area where my Wi-Fi coverage just can't get to that level, I can't move the APs, I can't augment the network to get to that level, I'll use that to bring it in there. And what that is, all that is is a battery powered IR strobe. It's like an exciter, yeah. but, but that is power and uh, hundred bucks. So all it's doing is strobing and we have IR receivers on our tags. In that strobe is the serial number, and battery percentage, that's all that's in there. So then all I have to do is in my map, my map or my model that I made in ESS, we have this idea of zones. And on the zone, I just take the serial number of that location beacon and I tie it to that zone. And therefore the IR takes precedence over the RSSI values at that point in time.
question. So what, what if you're in a healthcare environment or an environment where somebody's wearing a, a, a coat over their tag? It actually penetrates. The, the, the IR will, will yeah. penetrate. The IR pen penetrates clothing. It doesn't clothing. penetrate okay. human body. It well, penetrates clothing. It now, does. Okay. I will say, though, if you have a winter jacket, Fair enough, but, but like lash or dogs, yes, or yes, or yes. Or like it, it, it'll even work in this functionality okay, too. The IR will penetrate the plastics that we have there, so we've done that. I think what was the testing we did when we first did it? We kind of took like hospital blankets and layered it over the IR devices, and I think it was it was a number of hospital blankets that we could still penetrate through. And I'm not talking like one or two, I think it was like five or something like that. I, I don't have the exact number, but so if, it, if you lost a tag in a, in a bundle of dirty linens or something like that, there's a good chance you'd be able to. Yeah, so, so I mean, there's so many use cases would you get this? And, and you lead me to one great use case. So the dirty linen, like you have, they have all these little uh, patient monitor devices yeah. about this big, but they cost about 10, $20,000. So what we've had is they put this on their device, right? And all of a sudden, you calibrate down the hallway right in front of the trash. So what happens is we make a logical zone in that hallway, the tag runs into that zone, boom, starts off alerts, then it'll throw away that $20,000 piece of equipment in the trash. And we, and we have prevented that stuff type of thing there. And temperature and humidity monitoring tag. Sure, we've added that. So this is our, our, our internal cube, so this is what you would put in the fridge. Now, you're only going to put this in a fridge if you know they have good enough network coverage to penetrate the fridge, obviously. And we can test it via the, you know, you can cable into this device, see what the, uh, the values are and do all that fun stuff. This is our, our temp humidity. So we're actually, we're actually even seeing this now deployed into servers, IT server rooms. I mean, because it's wirelessly managed, so now you just, you don't have to do a cable drop. It's got two AA batteries and you just mount on the wall and now you're getting that information. Yeah, so we have business logic uh, that we can do. So I can put, you know, a high, a low, a range on the temperature. So if I go outside of that, I can send out email, emails, SMS, you know, in the application, I can fire up the application. So I'm going to say why I've had these things go off real quick all the time. I actually have one of my, my these tags, they have an accelerometer on them. And that's how sensitive our accelerometer is. I could drop something on this shelf, and it's a sensitive enough thing that it'll go off. And what I have it doing is sending it a message to our, our badge tags here so that you can see you know, what zone, what area, and that's what you're hearing, and that's what's going on all the time up there. Not, not the friend foe. We don't have a friend foe, but we have an optical temper, tamper here. So and it really it is, it's just, it's on here. I don't see any light. I pull it off, I see light, I go. So a simple use case for this, and, and, and I, I laughed at it. They're like, well, we're going to put these on the back of our big screen TVs. What the heck? All it was is we have the motion accelerometer and the tamper sensor. They want to know if that ever moves, because theoretically that TV should never move. It was on a campus. So that was the use case. And then obviously, so if they knock it off, that sets off an alarm. And then you know either security has this or email or whatever you want to do. They receive the alert on that one, and then they can start reacting to it on that one. What's your battery life now? Um, it, with infrastructure mode, it, you're looking at you know for these asset ones, you're definitely looking at a year, two years lifespan on this one. And this has just got two CR2 batteries in it, replaceable camera, digital battery batteries. These are rechargeable form factors here. So do you have like a little calculator tool that says if it beacons this off, then it moves yeah. this off? You can you can figure out some computations on there and figure out all that yeah, one stuff. Yeah, it's the uh, actual location engine. So, so you it's not just so the way back. No, you get to use the you know, web browser to access. Yeah, all of our applications are are web based. Our servers web. You know, everything's just web based. It's an IP or host name. You can log into it as long as it's on your intranet. Anybody anywhere on the network could access it. All and, and so is our user application. Everything. Else. So regarding your, 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 the engine, right, that, that does the tag tracking, the Cisco now has the Cisco tag engine, right, that uses CAS licenses on the MSC. Yeah. Um, are you guys utilize, are you guys leveraging that engine, or do you guys have a second engine that we have to use, or another appliance, or? So that, that relationship is, um, we're still getting tighter and tighter and figuring out exactly how that's going to work. So the mobility service engine obviously has their engine, um, and we're working with the integration of actually 
using our application and, and so forth. Like we, that. we are already uh, in a couple of levels integrating with the MSC. So, so uh, we, we use a hybrid of our location and, for example, MSC access as a pass through for some of the buttons and our IRs and all that kind of stuff. That's okay. already yeah. out, and there will be more integration with the MSC very in the very near future. So okay. we're getting closer and closer with this stuff all the time. Well, so between the survey products and RTLS, which one is more of what's you know, your business your comes business. more from? So um, if you look at Echo, how it's a venture capital based company, right? So there's like $30 million thrown into the company, and the guys are expecting a big exit. And what, what has the hockey curve uh, revenue stream is the RTLS, because that market is growing like right. this, and our revenues are growing, in, you know, with the market, right? Uh, side survey, the business is all the time growing, like 40% per year, but it's still not the hockey, hockey stick. So definitely RTLS is, a, you know, the larger, definitely a much larger chunk of our revenue today than uh, side survey. Both are like multi-million dollar businesses, of course, but, but RTIS, you know, much, much bigger. Right. So I'll just show you the application real quick, just so you see it. Well, maybe, maybe not. So, so there's the application layer. Icons, <laughs> you got IRs and stuff like that. I did a real simple, simple one. So all my tags, this is the front of the conference room. So I have them all here. I could put one over there and, and show it there. One from one place to another. Yeah. And I made, there's two more in the back there too, so there's a couple so more zones. Where's the back? Oh. The, you can put it right there, the IR beacon's right there in the middle there. Got it. No, it's another beacon. Oh, uh, no, that's why, yeah. So, okay, we'll see more. Should move here in a second. I hope. I had it working before everybody came in here. Oh, and then they come back over here. That's the way it goes. Oh, that's why I can. Well, that's there, it goes. there it went. Just need a little bit of time there. So, so that's you know that's where I can get into a room sub room level with the IR beacon. Typically wirelessly, we're going to be able to get all that stuff. Other than that, that's RTLS in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one more thing is like Colombo. You were probably wondering why are we handing you out uh, Echohard network adapters? That's because we're going to need it because we're also sending you late next week when the mobile survey is actually out. We'll send you uh, a fully blown site survey pro as well as wow. the mobile wow. survey. Wow. 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 So that, that I just want to show you what the message is, what it looks like. Um, so what this is, is we also have the staff to rest. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like with the message and everything like that. And that's what a pop-up is, and that's where you find it on the map there. So.